Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? So you might be wondering, what accessories do I personally make that I own are worth having? I will say it is going to be dependent on the type of build you make. I will say that in general, okay, there are kind of three mantras of thought here, okay? That is to say, you can either go for the PvP element of this game, or you can go for the PvE element. And I say this because, ultimately, there are some classes that probably do better when they're against players, and there are some classes that do better against bosses. And fundamentally, anybody that goes down the Arrow God slash Plume Monarch slash Sacred Hunter routes, okay, you guys are what I call the PvE champions of this game, all right? And, yeah, you can do a stupid amount of damage, depending on whether or not you are playing Magic Mage, right? You can do a bunch of damage playing Arrow God slash Plume Monarch. You can also do just as much damage doing as a Martial Sage or even as a Warbringer. But you may be wondering what exactly should I be getting for my back accessories? Ultimately, I think there are only a handful out there that are going to play to certain skill classes. Like, skill damage with the Moonlight Wisp, for example, is going to help mages. Okay? You need skill damage if you're a prophet because you ain't getting it very easily. You're getting stunned, like, left and right. But skill damage is a pretty big issue in your world, right? The same could also be said for Dark Lords. So Prophets and Dark Lords are both going to need that. The Emerald Embrace is combo damage, so obviously players that are playing combo-based classes like Sacred Hunter and Blue Monarch are going to need the Emerald Embrace. In Blade Pursuit, you're going to need counter damage. That's going to be your Martial Sage and your Warbringer. More so your Warbringer than your Martial Sage, but a Martial Sage will still need it. Okay? Then you got your Dragon Plight, where, hey, all of a sudden, every 11 seconds, you're going to deal 2,000 skill damage, 800% current combo, and 800% counter. It's an answer to all three classes. It doesn't make any one class benefit, but it is also an 11-second timer. Just to say that where this crits right off the gate, this takes 11 seconds to proc, which means most people... In PvP, are not going to find that this is actually all that goddamn helpful. In PvE, it very well can be. The Divine Intervention skill with Commencement Rest, for example, is kind of an interesting one. In that it gives you HP, then it increases your attack, then it gives you another shield, and gives you more attack, and it's it just props over and over and over depending on how much you lose in health. This skill kind of intervenes in between the players that are playing in both PvP and PvE. It's more useful for PvP, but it, again, more of a PvE-centric skill to have in your arsenal. In fact, I would argue that what you get in Cosmic Rescue is very comparable to what you get in the Peppy Styles Thruster, where, again, you're getting a 8-second into battle proc, where you get an actual attack and you lose an enemy attack and then 50 seconds into it you get this very more pve centric in the peppy style thruster where this one you know it's like okay you're gonna gain a four percent shield and increase your attack by five percent you're gonna gain six percent and five percent when you're hp below a certain amount so this skill here works a little bit better for that pvp aspect of the game than it does say the pve element that this does based on time and again the key thing here is time is what ultimately determines what makes certain accessories better than others because whether or not you have 5 10 or 15 seconds is a massive difference in what you're able to do and so it also has to play into what your build is capable of doing typically people that are going to be playing the profit mages they're going to want to stun the living jack or wagon out of every person they can possible. Get as much time as they can get on their arsenal. Because once they proc and hit, they're going to do a stupid amount of damage once. That is the benefit of a prophet and a mage. They do a lot of damage at one time. Combo damage with your archer class is more of a constant, consistent, I'm going to hit over and over and over, and I'm going to do a lot of damage very, very quickly. That is more your archer at arrow class type players. And your counter damage players, which are your tanks or warbringers and what have you, they love to counter. The, 
that because ultimately they're banging on the fact that they know that players are going to go and hit them over and over and they're going to counter back and do a ton a ton of damage and get hp so they're like the perfect answer against the archer the mage is the counter to that warbringer so in a way you can almost argue a mage is going to be the answer to the warbringer the same way the warbringer is the answer to the archer and the archer is an answer to the mage that said whether you're one or the other of those three is ultimately going to be determined by what you have in your talents, what you've got in back accessory, what you have in mounts. Because this is ultimately where you also get to change around what type of skill bonuses you're going to get and what kind of effect they're going to have. You might have noticed that the Luminous Plumage is one that I mentioned briefly but didn't really speak of. It's 40 times on 0.5% defense, which is to say it's 20% defense with 10% attack boost. Eh, okay, not a big deal. Fancy feathers. Nothing fancy there. But it's an overall, across the board, useful tool to have. Much in the same way that this one kind of appeals. And the only difference is this appeals regardless of whether there's a time or not. It runs on stacks, which requires it to proc however many times. So to find yourself in that situation when you're getting the most bang for your buck for it, it just isn't there. And so it gets kind of run aside. That said, back accessories alone, that is kind of my thought process behind what back accessories are effectively what the role is. Now, which one is actually best? I am of the opinion that what you gain and the Celestial Surprise is stupid overpowered in the fact that it gives you AoE bleed damage, which is going to give you basic attack up to five times and it ignores damage immunity, each time having a 50% chance of dealing extra damage equal to 1.5% of the max HP at the start of the battle. This is a stupid good accessory to have. I would argue it is better than a lot of the other accessories right now. There are some, like the new accessory that we got with the Cosmic Rescue, that, yeah, they make their entrance point in here, and it is noteworthy, but it's not like it the Cosmic Artifact that we just recently got, which, like the other artifact that I'm a fan of, okay, I'm a fan of the Flaming Carnage in front pack partly because of this AoE bleed damage, because AoE Bleed, to me, is a really nice skill to have because it ignores damage immunity. So for players that are running that Blitz Assault build, they are going to get completely shredded by this. And it reduces target crit damage by up to 20 times, basically giving you a 20% potential chance of having complete ignoring of their crit resistance. So for a lot of your crit builds, like your archers and, you know, basically anybody in the archer build, the archer builds are going to love Flaming Carnage. Not so much your counter builds and not so much your mage builds, unless they run a lot of crit. And crit's one of the funny things that doesn't really factor to any one class. I would argue that you're finding that that flaming carnage is really going to be an answer to a lot of those players that are running into a lot of martial sage type players that are running the draconic resonance combos. You know, and so for that reason, you know, that's that's kind of the answer to it. Now, is it really practical in PvP? Yeah, it is. But is it really that good? Eh. You know, but in a Plume Monarch build like the one I'm running, okay, I'm basically running Blitz Assault. I'm running Disarm, Shroom Shield, Worldly Snare, and Clone Strike. As far as the timing is concerned, I like to use Clone Strike first, and then after about two and a half seconds or so, I'll proc the Shroom Shield. Okay, one and a half to two and a half seconds. The first skill I'll pop every 0.5 seconds. Is it necessary? Not really. Like you could probably set that to no delay. It won't make a hell of a lot of difference. Okay, but you're giving yourself three seconds of damage immunity. So you can kind of play with this and see what, what works for you. Um, but ultimately, the idea here is to proc as many skills as you can because in my book, I happen to have the magic carpet, which you didn't already know the magic carpet every six skills restores energy with one random skill so the more often you can proc more and more skills the more likelihood that you're going to proc another clone strike which is going to gain you that much more hp and that much more overpoweredness you know and so that's ultimately what you're aiming for in this particular setup but hopefully that was an answer to your question as to what type of back accessories i recommend 
and I'll see you guys next time.